Um, I will um, also add my support to what's been done in the House. Um, the one, two, three plan has, I think, over half of the House as co-authors at this point. Um, so it's something that's very popular. Um, that is a pay increase without any sort of connection to merit. And so that's just so, so you know, the, the sentiment around the capital is that the teachers have obviously earned that pay increase long ago, and that we're behind in getting uh, some sort of uh, reward for their good work. Uh, especially at this school, we've seen some tremendous work done and great scores in place. Of course, we can never pay teachers what they're truly worth. And so that's, that's just an acknowledgement. That there's, there's never gonna be, um, there's never gonna be that um, acknowledgement of what the true value of teaching is in a monetary sense. And so that is uh, not something that I wish were the case, but that's something, that's something that is the case and will continue to be the case because of the high value that we place as a society on educating uh, our young people. Um, I support the one, two, three pay raise plan. Um, it could potentially be a two, one, three, depending on how things play out the rest of the session. Um, in terms of how the best way is to fund that, it will be a combination of things, um, as has been alluded to already. Um, I think that we can still find efficiencies within state government to make sure that that is taken care of. Um, we also, I also support the elimination of deductions and tax credits and exemptions. Um, I believe in low tax rates across the board, but in order to get to those low tax rates, we have to take care of some of these, these things that we've given out over the years. Uh, because what's, what's happening in, in state government is that we're actually picking some win winners and losers. And um, I don't think that that's our role to do, um, although we have some programs that are very favorable and have a great return on investment. Um, we, want to, we, want to, we want to sustain and protect those, but overall we want to evaluate all of the deductions, all of the, all of the tax exemptions, and figure out if we can piece together what is truly invigorating to an economy, but also uh, fair and, uh, and value. So once the plan is fully implemented, uh, we will be the second highest average pay in the region. And that region includes all of the states that border us. Um, and so that is, that's an encouraging piece of information um, that will hopefully be um, combined with um, some things that, um, oh, one minute. That will be combined with some other reforms that we need to make. For example, um, part of this proposal is that we go ahead and we freeze the flex benefits that are being spent right now. The reason we need to do that is that is really what has eaten up a lot of the growing cost um, over the last eight to 10 years. Um, that rate of growth is something that is not sustainable right now. And so that is something that we need to do. All other state agencies and employees have had their flex benefits capped. And so this would just be falling in line what is um, true across the board. And that will also allow some flexibility for pay, which seems to be what people are focused on when they recruit teachers and when they retain teachers. And so that's, that's something we're going to want to do. We're the only state in our region that actually provides that generous, um, that generous allowance. So that's something that we want to see happen. One other thing I'll just quickly mention. In theory, I agree that we should actually not uh, set the base at the state level. I think districts should set the base. Um, so eventually, we'll raise the minimum salary schedule now, because um, that's the best way to do it now. But eventually, let's let the school district set those. So, thank you.